The OCD and Anxiety Podcast by Robert James Coaching. Hello and welcome to the OCD and Anxiety Podcast, where we explore how to have a more positive relationship with anxiety disorders taking back control so that you can start living the life you choose and not the one chosen by your fears. Hello and welcome to episode 380. I hope that you're doing very well today. If you are though struggling with OCD or anxiety and you would like to speak to me about that, well you can get a free session to get that. You can head over to my website robertjamescoaching.com and there you can book in directly for that free session or if you prefer you can send me a message and let me know about what you're struggling with. In today's podcast I'm going to be talking about the link between procrastination and and anxiety. This is something that I think uh, many of us who struggle with anxiety and OCD can relate to because so often we are putting things off, you know, waiting to feel just right before we take action. And actually, a lot of the time that can just make things worse. So today we're going to be uh, talking about that. If you would like to follow and like on Instagram, that would be great. My Instagram handle is at Robert James Coaching UK. Also, if you would like to follow on YouTube, the podcast is now there as well. And there we go, guys. I really hope that you enjoy this one. If you have any questions, do please let me know. And off we go. In the article, How to Recognize Anxiety-Induced Procrastination by Alice Boys, PhD, she argues that anxiety and procrastination go hand in hand. When we feel anxious about something, we'll put it off. Sometimes this is obvious to the person experiencing it. For instance, if you put off your driving test because you're scared of failure or of getting hurt while driving, or you're too nervous to ask out the person you have a crush on. However, the anxiety procrastination link isn't always so clear to sufferers or observers. And, you know, this is this is a really important thing because, you know, how often are we persuading ourselves that, you know, that we need to put this thing off? And it's not obvious that actually it's about anxiety or it's about an obsession. You know, maybe we're, we're, we've been putting something off that's really, really important to us for a long time. Obviously, you know that I, I really tend to focus a lot on acceptance commitment therapy in this podcast. And, you know, a big part of that is focusing on our values, recognizing what's truly important to us, taking the time to sit down and figure that out, and then trying to set goals in relation to those values and making sure that you're kind of moving towards those goals. And that helps us to, to have the sense of momentum, the sense that we're, we're going somewhere in life. And that's really important, in my experience, to well-being. And so, Obviously, when we are procrastinating, that can really, you know, cause a problem in that whole process. If we're procrastinating important things that actually are really, you know, we really want to achieve or we really want to do, because deep down there's a, a real sense of anxiety about that thing, then of course it's going to be holding us back. It's going to make us feel that we're not making progress. It can make us feel like our world is smaller because we're not living our life by by our values. You know, and this is a real, a real shame. And so trying to perhaps identify what are some of those areas where you are procrastinating. And maybe, as the article was pointing out, it will be obvious. Maybe there's some really obvious things where you're like straight away, yeah, that exam, I don't want to do it. So I'm kind of putting it off or, you know, whatever it might be in your in your day to day life that you, you know, you you know, it's quite obvious Maybe it's even doing exposure activities that you recognize you could do if you were able to push yourself, but you keep pushing it off. You keep not wanting to do it because you know it's going to be difficult. You know it's going to give you anxiety. You know, so those are the kind of obvious things, but it might be a good idea as well to try to reflect on what are some of the less obvious things that you're actually procrastinating on. Now, a good way to try and work this out could actually be to to kind of think about things that you're telling yourself 
that it's not the right time to do right now. So if there are some, you know, a few things perhaps, or one big thing that you're telling yourself, now's not the right time. And maybe, you know, maybe it isn't the right time. There may be a actual general, uh, genuine, sorry, reasons for that, for, for why it isn't the right time to do that thing. But perhaps actually you've been telling yourself for a long time that it's not the right time to do that thing. And perhaps if you were to continue with that approach, you know, you will continue telling yourself that in the near and long term future. And, you know, it may end up with you, unfortunately, kind of not doing that thing at all. And that would obviously be a shame and be be a wasted opportunity, whatever that thing might be. And of course, normally, as, as, as I was pointing out earlier, these things are important to us. You know, if, if they weren't, we wouldn't have anxiety about them. We wouldn't be procrastinating them, you know, because we wouldn't really care about them. So obviously these things are important to us on some level and so if we don't kind of push ourselves a little bit to lean into that discomfort and do those things it's going to frustrate us whether that's consciously or subconsciously you know so trying to identify what those things are that you're that you're putting off that you're telling yourself i can't do that until the ocd is this much better or i can't do that until i'm in this position you know, and as I was pointing out earlier, okay, yeah, you might want to be careful with how you approach things. You don't want to throw yourself into the deep end with something that's too difficult for you to manage. You know, so, so be careful with, with you know, what you're going to do. But, you know, if you can push yourself a little bit to take yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit and get yourself moving towards that thing, even if it's just taking, you know, one little step each day that gets you moving towards that thing that you keep putting off, you know, it's going to, it's going to really help you to, you know, to start feeling a little, a little bit better, to start feeling like you have a little bit uh, of uh, momentum in your life and that you're not being held back so much by, by your fears. Another sign that you uh, you might be procrastinating is that you're you're kind of telling yourself that you you can't do something that you know that it's too difficult for you to do or maybe you could do it if you had the time but it's going to be so difficult that you know it's it's no point in getting started with it it's going to be too hard for you or maybe you're you're persuading yourself that you just don't have the skills or the talent to do that thing you'd love to do it but you really keep persuading yourself that that you can't and it almost becomes the kind of self-fulfilling prophecy where you know because you've kind of talked yourself out of it so much you know you're not able to do it and you know this can be even a little bit harder than the previous one we just mentioned because there's this kind of big self-doubt as well as the anxiety that's coming up and you know this is very much related to to limiting beliefs a few weeks ago I was talking about learning how to juggle that was something that I convinced myself that I that I couldn't do you know and recently I, I kind of forced myself to learn how to do it and there was lots of moments that came up along the way with that where I was, you know, I was feeling like this is really difficult and I'm just going to give up. I can't do it. But I had to kind of keep, you know, focusing and trying again and trying it in different ways. And eventually I kind of figured it out and and I could do it. And I think it comes it comes to comes back to the same kind of thing when we're trying to, you know, to to push ourselves a little bit to to, again, get out of our comfort zones and to recognize this thing is important to me. I'm telling myself a negative story about it that I can't do it. Perhaps if I just tried the first step, tried the first thing with it, maybe then I could actually make some progress with it. And it may not be perfect, but you know, if you take one step and you start to feel a bit better about it, a bit more confident, you know, then then of course you you really start to feel that maybe you can do this. Now, of course, there is also, you know, as we're kind of talking about this, you may just be thinking about doing exposure activities. And there is a big correlation between what I'm talking about you now and exposure work. And so, you know, if there's things that you're telling yourself you can't do in relation to your obsessions, of course, it's all about just breaking it down into smaller steps, trying to, you know, do something very easy to begin with, prove to yourself that you can do that, move on to the next thing. And little by little, we start proving to ourselves that we can do a lot more than we've been telling ourselves. 
another reason we might procrastinate is actually perfectionism where and this is kind of a maladaptive perfectionism not all perfectionism uh, perfectionism is bad of course there's there's really good elements to it you know wanting to, to to kind of get a project done to your the best of your abilities is is a really good thing to 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 have but it can move into maladaptive perfectionism where we feel that you know we don't even want to get started with something because the 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 thing that we want to do the project that we have in mind it's it seems so big so difficult there could be so many things that we potentially get wrong with it that we think well i might as well just not get started it's going to be too difficult and again it comes back to breaking it down and looking at those little those little steps now it might even be sometimes that you're anxious about something that you've done many many times before that actually you're you're very good at you've been successful at in the past but you're feeling anxious about it, maybe because you have been successful in that thing in the past. You kind of, you know, don't want to be doing it in case you're not successful this time. And so you're kind of procrastinating doing that thing because, you know, you don't want to make a mistake. The, the previous times you did it, you did it really well. You, you did it close to perfect, you know, and you don't want to maybe uh, do it again and not do it quite so well. And yet another telltale sign that you're potentially procrastinating because of anxiety is that you're blaming other people for you kind of not taking action. You're actually, you know, you're you're focused on if only this person would help me or if only this person wasn't acting like this or doing this or, you know, blaming other people, you know, for, for kind of getting in the way or stopping us from taking action that we need to take. You know, it's just another kind of excuse that we come up with because actually deep down we're just feeling very anxious we're feeling uncomfortable and as we know with with problems like OCD and anxiety so often the issue is that we don't want to feel difficult emotions we don't want to allow the discomfort to come up the idea of getting something wrong the idea of failure the idea of negative judgment from from other people all of these things can can feel really uncomfortable in the body and people with OCD and anxiety generally speaking and this obviously includes myself we tend to be very good I think at kind of deflecting those difficult emotions through different approaches often that can actually be you know the the process of obsessing and compulsing because that kind of stops you in a way from feeling at least in the short term the difficult emotions it might be procrastination you know, in a way, procrastination can almost become a compulsion in itself. You know, it's it's so sneaky the way in which we we kind of have all of these strategies to not allow ourselves to feel. And, you know, a really big part of getting over these problems is really getting in touch with that ability that we all have to to get more in touch with our bodies and our emotions, to be able to sit with the difficult sensations in the body without pushing them away and actually learn that, you know, they're not going to to hurt us, that they are uncomfortable, but actually we can learn to allow them to be there. We can even learn to slightly become kind of curious about them, to become a bit more interested in them. Because when we can do that, well, that's the beginnings of acceptance. And, you know, acceptance, it really does change and everything when it when it comes to anxiety it really does allow us to have a completely different experience of of anxiety and, and other difficult emotions so there we go guys i really hope that you found that one help, helpful if you have any questions at all about anything that i've spoken about today do please let me know and i will see you next time just a quick reminder that if you want to get a free session all you need to do to get that is to head over to my website www.robertjamescoaching.com and there you can leave me a message and we can arrange the uh, free session and now just a quick reminder of my disclaimer any information that you view on my website instagram page facebook group or anywhere else online or any information that you listen to on the podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for actual medical or mental health advice from a doctor, psychologist, or any other medical or mental health professional. 